What's up, guys? Sean back with another video, and we got Gina. Possibly the most unhygienic episode, I think, of my success. I, actually, I don't know. Gene or whatever, the one I did like a week or two ago. That one was pretty gross, too. She was the pus princess, but Gina is the master of not bathing. So, yeah, I think, yeah, she's probably the most unhygienic. Uh, I don't know. It's still pretty close. I guess let's go to Jersey and figure out. You guys can vote later on who's the most un unhygienic. Who's riding a damn scooter? Side note, I had a razor when I was a kid. That damn thing was about 100 pounds under my weight limit, and I turned that thing into a low rider. I should not have been riding that. I was begging to hurt myself. I wake up every day to the same miserable experience. Because my weight has me trapped in this chair all day, every day. And I hate it. All I can do now is eat and sleep. Puppy. Except on the days where I'm forced to take a bath, which I really hate doing. Forced? What do you mean? They use some kind of Jedi mind tricks to get you in the damn bathroom? Is it that bad? Can She, I, she must not be able to get up out of the chair then. Because if she has, if she's sitting there, she's trapped, she, she can't walk, I guess. Me and my wife, Beth, live with my mom, my sister, and her fiancé, Keith. And usually it's either my mom or my wife that eventually make me take a bath. But I try to avoid it as much as I can. What is this chick, some kind of vampire? Like the holy water will burn her? She is avoiding it at all costs? That's the craziest thing I've heard. Also, this, oh no, he did, I thought the dog had shoes on. It's just a ball. G, mm -hmm. you have to get washed up today. Okay. So I'll go in there and I'll get your bucket and get that ready for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But if my family starts to nag me a lot about it, i just rather not deal with everyone being upset with me, so I just do it. Maybe once a month. They're probably nagging you because you're shooting napalm out of your butt, but, I mean, it's got to smell bad in that house. Jay, your bucket is in there, so Beth just needs to get your clothes and your towel, and then you're all set to get washed up, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Gina is very lazy, and she doesn't take care of herself. We all struggle with how she is and, and want her to do better, but it's like walking on eggshells to confront her because it starts a fight. I haven't seen anybody in that house that can walk on eggshells yet, just saying. But she's not stuck in the damn chair. What does she mean she's trapped? She's getting up better than I think I would have. Sometimes I start to smell. And my family doesn't like it. So they forced me to get up and do it if it's been a while since the last time I cleaned. But it's one of the most miserable experiences in my life now. Because I don't have a shower or tub I can use. All that's upstairs. And I stopped being able to go up there over a year ago. I see the bad moon rising. But alright, she's going to take a hooker back bath. So we got like the uh, bucket full of bad decisions she's about to use. So I bathe downstairs in the half bath, sitting on the toilet. But without running water, I have to use a bucket and a loofah sponge that has a stick to reach all the areas of my body that I need. I had that. But it's so hard, it's a lot for me to do. And it's really a painful experience, so I just can't do it for long. Uh, you're sitting down, ma'am. Like, you're gonna go sit out there. Why can't you just scrub? But also, how are you getting clean on the toilet? Like, a little bit of poop and pantene? Some, like, dove and diarrhea? How does this work out? This can't be... Well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. So you might as well use the damn toilet water as mouthwash. So when it gets too much for me, I just have to stop and go back to my chair. Because I'm done. It's embarrassing not being able to handle something as basic as taking a bath because I'm too fat. And I know how little I can do frustrates Beth because of how much she has to do for me. 
I'm like a child she has to take care of. And I don't even feel like she sees me as her wife anymore. Uh, definitely embarrassing when everyone else can do something that you can't. But at the same time, like, she could do more than that. I think she's probably just sunk into the, like, depression stage of it. Where, like, doing anything feels like just too much. Like, you can't be bothered. Everything is just a task to you at that point. You don't want to get up. You don't want to do anything. You just want to sit there, be miserable, and watch the world pass you by. Can you help me get powdered and get dressed? Yes. I put everything that I have into this relationship because Gina's my whole life, but it's not. Oh, a little bit of powder play. Also, I hope you guys didn't just eat because I'm about to break down that rash and you guys hate when I do that, but it's chub rub. It's like this nasty thing. If you're going to ask me, that's probably like three or four days of not taking care of it. Because once you get to like five or six of not getting it in check, it starts to get like raised and almost blister. But I do see like the white, filmy, like milky, nasty stuff that starts to come out of it after a couple days. I'm pretty sure it's very similar to like a woman's yeast infection. I'm not 100% on that though. I just know you can use like antifungal cream to get rid of it. The powder will keep it in check. It won't get rid of it. The kind of marriage that I want because of the weight that she's at. I want our marriage to be different by her being healthy and it makes me feel angry because I feel like she's she's given up completely. Bro, I can't she had to sit in Clorox. I refuse to believe that each one of you just has like a spitting cobra down there that can just friggin' dye your pants different colors. That's insanity. That's like, now I just got this funny mental image of what I'm going to think every time I see somebody with like bleached hair. And that's, that's a wild mental image I just got. Do you want to start making breakfast? Sure. Okay, thank you. I hate that I let it all get to this point. But when it comes to food, it feels like I have no control. When I wake up, I'm starving and I can't wait to eat. Before she goes to work, Beth makes us all what we need for breakfast. Eating, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel happy. It takes away all my pain and depression. Damn, that's like a new level of 600 pound life where you balance the plate and also have another plate. Like she's just setting up a serving tray right here. I've never seen somebody pull that move off when they have something next to them where they could sit their plate. She don't even want to reach down to stop for a second. So no matter what it's costing me and how much I hate my life, I can't stop. I just want more and more and more. That's what she said. So I have to have someone constantly bring me more food. Or do we need full-time employees just to feed friggin' Gina? Because she's on second breakfast and I don't think it's probably been but a couple hours. Without it, I would have nothing in my day to even look forward to. It saves me from everything and it always has. No matter what I've gone through or how bad things got, I knew I could always rely on food to get me through it. Bro, how is she going to put down breakfast and then two foot long like Philly cheesesteaks and a whole tray of cheesy fries? That's absolutely nuts that she can put all that away. My life's been hard. The first thing I remember was my older sister Allie getting diagnosed with agoraphobia when I was seven and she was 11. I felt like all of my mom's attention was on my sister. So I always felt my whole life like I was always like pushed under the rug. Can you be agoraphobic that young, like afraid to go outside? That just seems like very early on for something like that. Actually, I guess I don't know. I guess all these things could come on set different times for different people. It just seems really young to have that kind of diagnosis. 
So that was a really hard time in my life and I got really jealous of my sister. And I remember what made me forget that pain of being abandoned was eating. And by the time I was 10, I was already over 150 pounds. Gotcha. Gina's childhood, I was the bad mom. You know, she would fight me to get food and instead of just saying no and dealing with a temper tantrum, I just gave in. What kind of fighting are we talking about here? Because if we're talking like UFC fighting versus like Jerry Springer fighting, or is she just like raising a little bit of a fit like Steve Wilkos fighting? Like what level of fighting are we talking about here? Because if she's throwing the friggin' Conor McGregor like elbows or something, that's a little bit different. You're going to give her them damn Reese cups. But if she's just yelling at you a little bit, that's a different story. I think I let her manipulate me 150%. So I think Ugh. for Gina, I carry so much guilt that it was my fault she was so heavy. My weight started to cause problems for me because I started getting bullied a lot. So that led to me acting out and getting punished a lot, which made things even worse. Especially with my dad, because he was the enforcer, kind of. And when I did something... When it comes to, like, disciplining your kids, this is just my opinion, but... I think there's a very fine line between, like, discipline and damage. Is that the word, fine line? Like, no, it's not a thin line. It's a fine line. Like, you can't go past the certain point where you're going to actually harm your child or cause them some kind of lasting, like, mental stress from it or something like that. And I think a lot of parents end up crossing that line without even realizing it because kids are fragile, right? Like, you push it too far, you're going just a little bit too far, but... At some points, like, if you're a badass kid like I was, I needed discipline. And I didn't get enough of it, if you ask my honest opinion, because I'm still messed up. Something wrong and he was upset, my punishments from him could get brutal. He would hit me, pull my hair. But at a young age, I didn't know that was abuse. I just thought that's how he, like, handled situations. But I would cry to my mom, cry to my mom. But she never stopped it or did anything about it. And it wasn't just happening to me, it was happening to Allie, too. My I mean, I have a mostly female audience or whatever, it's like 82% female. So, I think a lot of you would feel some type of way if the guy you had kids with was, like, hitting your kids. I think most of you would step in in that situation, it wouldn't go this far, so... My dad would punch me in my face until my nose bled. My dad would choke me until I couldn't breathe. My dad would kick me until I was black and blue on my legs, and I had to go to school like that. He would say that I'm not good enough, I'm not worth it, I'm disgusting, I'm fat, I smell, I'm stupid, I'm dumb. Dad I gotta see a picture of this guy, because nothing in this family is screaming skinny to me. And right now I'm thinking that this guy was like overweight and it just made him feel better for some reason. So I'm just getting this picture of like a weak, insecure guy in my head who's overweight and feels somewhat better treating a child this way. And that's just how I'm looking at him. I'm going to picture him as the smarmy little weasel in my head that I have right now. That's when me and my sister would escape and go to get food and go to every fast food place we could. And I was already up to over 300 pounds by the time I started high school when I was 14. Yeah. But in high school, things got even worse because my parents got a divorce. And for some reason, my mom did nothing to keep us with her at that time. Oh, your mom's just a whole lot of suck, huh? Because if you're already doing like Burger King breakouts and stuff when you're a kid just to get out of the house, there's some messed up dynamic in that home. And I like... I put it on the dad mostly from what she just said, but the mom sounds like she was just a friggin' peach as well. Like a great person she was. So me and Allie ended up living with our abusive father without our mom. And that's when things got really bad because there was just nothing holding him back anymore. We weren't able to leave our home when the abuse happened. We weren't able to do anything. And when we were able to, we escaped and we got food. That was our escape. I mean, I was a Taco Bell teenager myself, but I wasn't escaping anything. I just liked the damn burritos. Also, the friggin' nachos there. I like 
now that I think about it, Taco Bell's not that damn great, but uh, as far as fast food goes, it's up there in my opinion. I was just trying to constantly eat as much as I could, and that pushed my weight to over 450 by the time I graduated high school. And as I was getting closer to 500, it started to get harder to do things. But that turned out to be a good thing because becoming disabled like that meant I could qualify for some financial assistance to get a place. And I talked. Well, I hope you had Beth sign a damn prenup. All this damn money you got making it rain in here. Like, no, why would that ever be a good thing? It's obviously not a good thing to get to that point where you're less mobile and you need assistance. To my mom and my sister about living together. I still hadn't forgiven my mom for how she handled things with my dad and us. But it was definitely a lot better of a living situation being with her and my sister instead of my dad. I was 19 and not quite 500 pounds then. So I was still trying to have a life and I even tried to start to date then. When I was 23, I finally admitted to myself that I liked girls. And I got on a dating site and that's how I met Beth. When okay, so she just latched on to the first possible person, got married, and now she just had, so I think she was looking for a caretaker more than a wife, honest to God. Because the way she treats Beth is not very nice. I don't like it at all. Seems like she's very mean and manipulative and then cries that everyone's being mean to her. Kind of that cry bully type mentality. Gina and I first started dating, Gina's personality is what drew me to her. Gina has a heart made of gold. She's fun, loving, caring a person that everybody loves. Maybe I really knew I loved rappers. her, and once we made our relationship official, things went really fast. Then uh, six months later, we got engaged, and then a year later, we got married. So it was kind of very fast. Beth. Yeah, you got a race when you got to beat tax time to that friggin' marriage, you know? Moved in with me, my mom, and my sister. And it's been a little awkward being married, but having to live with my family, with me and Beth sleeping on the couch. And being as big as I am now, has also definitely put a strain on our marriage, too. How so? Because as I've gotten bigger and become almost immobile, it's become best job to take care of me. Uh, throughout the day, I'll get a phone call or a text to get what she wants from a restaurant or a pizza joint up the street. You're not her wife. You're her Uber Eats at this point. Like, she, you're getting no wifely, like... Your wifely duties are deliver food. That's all she wants. There's nothing else involved here. Bring home the money to pay for my food. That's about it. And then I also have to make sure that I'm getting everything that, that everybody else wants. Her sister, Allie, her mom, Kathy, and it's not easy. I do feel like a caretaker, but I don't like the conflict. I don't want a fighting marriage. So I just get what she wants. You've got to be kidding me. If everyone in the family was treating me like their own personal delivery driver, I would blow my damn top so fast that that tin is going to go somewhere the sun don't shine. No matter if it's not been washed in a month or not, that damn shiny thing is going right up there. She tells me she still loves me and that my weight and how big I am now hasn't changed anything. But I know it has, because we stopped being intimate. Beth and I haven't had sex since three years ago before we got married, and she always comes up with different excuses on why we're not. I think I got it figured out. Nobody's gonna flick your bean if you're friggin' fermenting stuff down there. That's just how that works. Like, you see what that thing did? It dyed your damn pants. I'm not gonna let it eat my tongue off. Like, I think that's probably what she's thinking. And Beth does make comments about how big I'm getting and how much I eat that make me feel bad about my weight. I just feel like at this point with how immobile I am and how bad my marriage seems to be, that my whole life is falling apart. At this weight, I am very miserable. I'm 28 and I'm probably over 600 pounds now and I'm only getting bigger. Probably, unless she's like super short and she's just shy of it. I don't see any way she's not 600 pounds. Because I don't think, I, I mean, I look pretty damn big. Looking back at it, I watched my first video the other day. Absolutely shocking to see myself like that. So I'm ruining any chance I have for a future. All because I can't stop eating. 
What are we doing for dinner? I have no idea. Beth's probably not going to cook. She's been working all day, so I don't know. Yeah. Gee, is Beth on her way home? Yeah. That's right, everybody. Call Beth the burrito bringer. I'm going to call her to just pick up some food. Okay. Hey, Keith. Hey, guys. Bye -bye. Where did you come from? Yeah, I'm getting hungry. I'm going to call her. Hi, babe. Where are you? Oh, are we home? Oh, okay. Well, can you go to the diner and pick up us some food? No, we have food at home. I can go home. You're in you see that? Trying to act like she doesn't know exactly what time she gets off work and is heading home? I bet she could time it down to the second to where she passes the fast food place. That's just how many times she's probably called for it. I'm not going to cook this late. I can. No, you're not. Everybody knows the ovens turn off after 7 p.m. You can't use them. What's the big friggin' deal? I don't get it. Just go. Wait, well, you gotta call me. No, you're gonna call because I, you have to call. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Love you, bye. Yep, love you, bye. <sighs> I'll just text her. Okay. It's just not fair for you to be treated this way. And it kills me because she's your wife. She shouldn't do that to you. What the hell are you talking about, you psychopathic, like, deserting mother that's now sitting here like, you're getting treated so bad by the only person that does everything for you. Ooh, I hate this whole family. And I'm a very nice guy. I don't usually hate people, but I hate this family. And she shouldn't constantly make you feel like you're the problem and tell you what you don't do. You're lazy, you smell, you're fat. Instead of building you up, you deserve so much more. She oh, suck a steak him, you friggin' psycho. He is a good person, and I feel maybe it will get better once I change for myself, but only time will tell. Hi. Hey, babe. You got the food? Yep. I'll just bring it in the kitchen. Thank God, I'm starving. I know my family thinks that Beth makes things worse, but I know that my weight is an issue that I could change. You know, there's part of me that wonders if they're like, this is all just edited together like this. But in the back of my head, like, I just feel like she's probably that scummy that she sees Beth just does everything for her and she just thinks that's how it's supposed to be. If I could just give up food. But if I can give up food, I would have done it a long time ago. But at the same time, I know my body's in bad shape. And it's getting worse every day. And if I don't stop gaining and getting bigger, I'll die because I didn't stop eating. I mean, Beth's quesadilla kind of looks fire, but I didn't... Ham on a burger? Is that even that good? If I don't do anything now, it's just going to get worse, and I'm going to die. You know, my sister's getting married in a couple of months, and she wants me to be in the wedding. But I'm too big to be able to get around. So even if I could make it to her wedding, to be there for one of the biggest moments of my sister's life, I don't know if I want the rest of my family to see how big I got in. You kind of try to hide away from anybody whose opinion actually matters. But she's also like dripping in grease and now I'm just thinking back to like once a month bath and this does not look good. Anna has a hard time getting out of the house and I'm extremely worried that she's isolated herself in a really big way. And it's hard, it's really hard. And now she's just secluded herself and Gina's killing herself. With fries, apparently, the damn chick's gonna turn it into a potato. You see how many cheesy fries she's had today? I know at this point, unless I lose weight, that I don't have much of a future now. I want to have a family and kids with Beth. I'm at a point where I'm giving up on my dreams. Because how could I have a life and do things when I'm this way?
I'm afraid for her because if Gina doesn't change, I don't see her living a long life. Losing Gina will devastate me. I, I, it would be horrible. I don't. I mean, yeah, obviously you don't want to see anybody pass, but those are kind of the odds you're playing with. Like when you get that big, it's either change or you're not long for this world. And that's just pretty much a fact. Like not many people live until their 40s when they're that big. I don't know how I would live without her. I'm gonna get ready for bed. Okay. Ooh. I'm very scared for Gina because I feel like Gina is killing herself slowly. And if she doesn't lose the weight, I fear that she will die. She's had like three different front, like phones in this episode. Do you think she has a delivery phone like specifically just for ordering food? Hey babe, before you lay down, can you get me a snack please? Sure. Food is controlling my life because I let it. Thank you. Thank you. And I know if I don't figure out some way to take back that control, then I have no hope because there's no way I can go on like this. You're gonna have to control your damn cholesterol. You've ate a hell of a lot of steak today. And that and chicken, and damn, she's really like killing it. And then all the cheese? There's no way this chick could, she has like regular BMs or whatever. So no matter how hard it is for me to see, I have to believe there's a chance for me to change. But I know I don't have a lot of time to find that help. So I have to try now because it's now or never. True. But about seeing and all that while you're sucking on the Pringles can in the corner, can you lose your sight from diabetes? I think you can. And she's already got glasses, so it makes me wonder if maybe she's diabetic. I make you to Houston and do this. I'm so nervous, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. I feel nauseous. Grab something to snack on, maybe you're hungry. Of course, not like nauseous means you need nachos. And they also borrowed the thousand pound sister's van. You see that? They got the same damn van. Do you think they just kind of switch it out between the fat people on TLC? Like you get a red van, you get to borrow this red van. Do you think it works that way? I just hope you get there without any issues, but it's a long trip and anything can happen. Can you stop at the nearest uh, fast food place? Because I'm hungry. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I can count on with food is that it calms me down. And if I'm going to have any chance of making it to the end of this trip, I'm going to need that help. You want the regular or double? Regular. Um. Where are we go? Are we at BK for the blood pressure? Because I think it'd be, this is that, I don't know. I, it's been a long time since I've been to any fast food joints like that. But my order was always the Bacon King. And then I probably would get a Hershey pie, maybe two. The Twix pie, when they had it, was fire. And then the 10-piece nuggets are super cheap. So you can just grab like two or three for later. But that was my fat boy expert order. Probably a root beer or a Coke, too. Meal or no? Yeah, but and chicken nuggets. Ryan, how can I help you? Um, can I get a uh, number one with cheese, chicken nuggets, and uh, order the chicken fries? Fourteen forty-seven, the second window, please. Thank you. In my head, I'm just trying to add up her fast food bill because I was very much a budget boy where I was trying to get stuff off the value menu because I didn't want to spend that much money on food. That's why I'm talking about how cheap the nuggets are. But she's sitting here clocking off $14 a spin or whatever, and she's done re-rolled like five times today, which makes me think she spends like $80 a day on fast food. Thank you. On just her. I honestly don't see how I'm going to be able to give this up. Especially when moments like these when food is making all the difference. Oh, 
but you just wait because Dr. Now is going to notice that Whopper with cheese on the damn scale too. You're in for it, lady. You are so in for it. I'm only 28 years old, so this is very important to me. Lie no one else will take me on as a patient. Crisscross. So my whole life depends on what's about to happen. Tina? There's my pissed off princess, still not smiling for me. I'm honestly not sure what this guy will say today. A whole lot of cheese. But I know that whatever it says, it's not gonna be good. 6.39. Oh, well, slap me stupid. That's less than I thought. That's also only 1.7 pounds more than I started at. So she's gotta be a hell of a lot shorter than I will. Well, yeah, now that I look at, look at it, she's pretty damn short. Well. Wow. That's not the worst number I imagined it to be. But it's still shocking to see a number like that. So I shouldn't have gotten this way. This is my last chance at a life. If he says no, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, never says no. He just says, get your ass on the treadmill. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, Sexy. Good. good, how are you? Just fine, thank you. I'm Dr. Nazard and Eugenia. Yes. And you are? Beth. Beth. And where are you all coming from, New Jersey? Yep, yes. talking to New Jersey. All right, so what? From hell, the diner, like the diner Diablos. They were always eating at the damn diner. New Jersey also is kind of the armpit of the U.S. You could fight me about it if you're from New Jersey. I just don't hear too many people say they're going to Jersey to vacation. This brought you down to Texas. I tried weight loss surgery before in New Jersey, and they told me I was too big. Well, you uh, have a BMI of 100 when it should be a quarter of that. So that is a dangerous uh, situation to be in. And there's a good chance you wouldn't survive surgery because of that. So I can understand. Damn, triple digits on the BMI? That's tough, because she weighs more than I did. When I did the math on it at my heaviest, I would have had to have been five foot five. So I would have had to have lost 11 inches for my BMI to be over 100. And you know us men ain't losing 11 inches. Let's just keep it real. And why you were told that, because you were too high risk to have a surgery. And what seems to be an issue with your eating habit? Not eating the right things. I snack a lot. Constantly snacking and you are 600 pounds and you're wondering <laughs> what's wrong, huh? Uh, uh, just a guy come in and say, my head hurt, and say, when, when, when I hit it with a baseball bat. <laughs> I would love for, like, when these episodes come out to see Dr. Now see that her snack was two foot-long Philly cheeses, a thing of cheese fries, followed by Oreos. That was a snack, because that was after breakfast. I think Dr. Now, like, he knows. He has to know if you're packing on the pounds like that. But he's he's like the fat lie detector. He knows she's lying her ass off. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so what drive you to snack? Are you hungry or you have it or nervous? Bored. Or what? Just bored. Like, Boredom? Mm-hmm, yeah. So I assume that you're not working? No, I don't work. All right, so how do you support yourself? Um, I'm on disability and my wife works. Okay, so you work. She works only for your diner deals. That's it. She's your damn Uber Eats driver. I can't get over that. All she does is bring you food, and then you complain that she's so terrible to you. Call day and bring home food and pay for her to eat all day at home. Yes. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so if you want to be in my program, here's what it's going to take. The first thing is I'm going to give you a 1,200 calorie a day, high protein, low carb diet that I want to start immediately. Okay. Just going to be only eating three times a day. There will be no snacking. Okay. And there will be less of food to avoid. Okay. So you're going to have to change your eating habit and develop some discipline in your life. And then over the That is a look of total shock that he is telling her. She could only eat twice a day. And think about 1,200 calories. I was looking back on it. Like, I used to like, like, honey roasted peanuts, right? I'd sit there and eat one of those whole little tins. So just out of curiosity, I looked online. I was like, I wonder how many calories are in a whole tin of honey roasted peanuts. 
and it was like 5,200 calories. I was like, well, that explains that 605 I saw. The next two months, I want you to lose 50 pounds. You think you can do that? Yeah. Okay, I hope so. So that means bad. You start feeding Gina as well as her whole family. Okay. And Gina, you start making your own meal and start pushing bed to get you food. Okay. There's going to be a starting point that you're going to have to show me that you're serious about it and motivated and get yourself in a better shape. And then if I accept you in my program and we move ahead with you to do weight loss surgery, the last thing is you have to move down to Houston for at least a year. So we can prepare. I know a lot of people feel some type of way, like, why do they have to move to Houston? And it's just all the constant doctor appointments, all the stuff you have to keep doing. Like, I went to over 100 doctor appointments. It's not just the diet or not just, like, a control thing, but it's, like, you have to be there because you need to go to all these follow-ups, all these pre-op stuff. It adds up. It's a lot. Like, if I added up the amount of time I spent in a doctor's office before this, I bet it was close to like a week's actual friggin' time. No, maybe not that much. It was a few days of hours like I spent in there. Why do you, with the support you need to be successful in the long run? Is that something you think you both can do? Mm -hmm. Yes. We can do that. Any questions? No. All right. I'll see you both in two months. And it was nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Nice uh, to meet nice you, too. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. And if you have any questions, give me a call. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. I mean, 50 pounds in two months is kind of generous. This is later on, too. This is season eight. I didn't think he was, like, that nice about it this later on. Like, this late on in the show. Early on, he said less, but I thought later he got a little more strict. I have a lot of concerns about Gina right now. But what I need to see from her right now is a willingness to start making the changes she needs by losing 50 pounds over the next two months. If yeah, the amount of effort that it's going to take for her to do that is not that much. Because once you're that big, it gets a little bit easier. I'm hungry. What would you like? I don't know what we have. I'll, I'll go tell you. Okay. Me and Beth. You're going to get a damn fish fillet or a chicken breast. You are not getting a Philly cheesesteak. If Beth gives her something bad, I'm going to be super pissed. Because I was finally happy that Beth was going to get to keep some of her paycheck. Beth had been back home for about a week. And food was obviously a big part of what helped me deal with the stress and the pain of the trip. So I couldn't even try to start the diet and exercise plan Dr. Now gave me until we got back home. So I haven't had a lot of time to make some progress yet. But Beth went to the grocery store and got some healthier food options for me to start adjusting to the new diet. So I Bro, why didn't they show us, like, why didn't they let us see how they ate on the way back? That's the stuff I want to see. I've been working on doing that, but it hasn't been easy because I haven't been feeling well. I think the traveling took a lot out of me and broke my system down a little. But I'm trying to do the best I can because I know how important this is. Uh, you have some turkey burgers. Uh, there's eggs. Uh, my fat vision spotted some kind of cake thing in that freezer. Are we going to have a cake-related fat-phobic incident? Like, do we need to call Virgie Tovar? Just give her the damn cake. That's what she wants. There's some lettuce if you want me to make a salad. <sighs> Oh no, I'm like not in the mood for any of that. I'm hungry and I'm sick. What do you want? Uh, something that I probably shouldn't have, but... You have to have what's on the diet. I know, but I don't feel good and I'm hungry. I understand that, but that's not a reason or an excuse. Okay, Baz, can you go get me something? We can't do that. You have to eat have apples on your diet. I'm so happy that her psycho mom finally took Beth's side instead of just sitting there and totally kissing Gina's ass because she did something bad to her as a child. You guys aren't eating healthy. When you guys said you would do this with me and you're not. You both Suck can't be preaching stick. to me when you two aren't doing it either. Yes, I eat bad. I'm sorry. Duh. I have not been 100%. But you need to want to do this for you. 
You, your whole life is ahead of you. But I'm overwhelmed. <clears throat> I'm overwhelmed. I'm very proud that you went. Overwhelmed? Eat a damn omelet. I'm pretty sure that's on Dr. Now's diet, but her whole comfort food and like food is the end all be all to make me happy is just the thought process that so many people on this show get into. And I don't think food ever made me that damn happy. I just think I never cared about myself and I just expected that I wasn't going to live this long. Like, I was like, I'm going to check out before 30. Now I'm 30. What the hell do I do? So this is here I am. Here I am, 34 years old, making you guys damn videos, watching flashbacks and having, like, war, war stories from my past, like, right here on the screen. Went to see Dr. Now and for your first appointment and you went to Texas and you did it. And I think the only way that you are going <laughs> to do this is you have to start becoming independent. Then maybe you should teach me how to make the turkey burgers. Yes. Okay. Beth and my mom just don't understand how hard this is for me. Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay. Turkey burgers is a good call. Turkey burgers are pretty good too. Like I didn't like them that like I would obviously always pick a regular burger, but now I kind of come around. Turkey burgers aren't bad. Because food is the only thing I have that makes me happy, and giving all that up is not easy. Get a puppy. But I really am trying because I know I have to start losing weight now. Not just because I need to get on Dr. Now's program and get weight loss surgery, but because Allie's wedding is coming. Is that what they used the bench press for to cook bacon? Holy shit. No wonder nobody's losing weight in that damn house. All their exercise equipment's in the kitchen to cook food. Coming up in a couple of weeks. And one of my big motivations has been to lose enough weight to be there for her. So I really want to do this, but everyone just treats me like I don't care instead of supporting me. And that makes me feel even more alone than I already do trying to do this. But that doesn't mean I'm not determined to make these changes because everything in my life depends on me doing this. That's true, only you could change your future. You can have help, and it seems like Beth's trying to be helpful, but you also just have this weird, uncanny ability to just bulldoze Beth. She can't speak up for herself and that's one of those qualities that i see in people that i'm just like no you need to tell people what the hell's up or when something is not okay like stand up for yourself but at the same time i think she's just used to being kind of beat down in that house because everybody sides with gina all this is getting to be too much for me <clears throat> so i don't know how long i'm going to be able to handle sitting here feels like everyone is staring at me. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna walk in. Oh, you mean like walk Cause in? Cause I need, cause like, uh, it's too much right now. Walk in tonight, you mean? Or just yeah, tomorrow? just, no, tonight. Okay. Uh, cause it's- Do any of you guys think that you would trust her to actually show up to your wedding and be one of your bridesmaids? Cause I don't think I could. If I was in her sister's shoes, which I, I do this thing where I always try to put myself in other people's shoes, I don't think I could trust you. Sorry, sis. Like, your panic attack during a rehearsal is kind of insane. It's too much. That's and, like, fine. My eyes. Too okay. much. That's fine. Right. I wanted to go by the door because it's hot. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. It's too much. Never heard you say that. Years good? Yeah. I just need to get out of the center of the room. I think doing this and being... Also, very little people will understand the, like, whenever you're so fat, the seam on your t-shirt, like, rips or whatever, and it makes it so it keeps rolling up like that. I used to have one that I had to roll down on the left side constantly. Here, Watch it was it. a bad idea. Sure. <laughs> this is just too much for me. I feel like I need to go to the car. I'm having a bad... I need to go to the car. Let's go. Do you have the keys? You can't do this tomorrow. I know. Do you have the keys? Hey, where's the van? Right outside. I can't do this. I just can't. I'm already exhausted and we haven't even done the rehearsal. 
and I feel like I'm about to have a panic attack. Quick, take me to Panera before I have a panic attack. Like, oh my god. This chick is such a baby, but she's so mean to everyone around her. I don't get it. I don't feel good. I can't take you back home. I know, but it's too much. I'm trying. I just don't think I could go back in there tonight. I'm sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm just afraid that Gina's gonna back out. <laughs> this was a. Uh, I wouldn't trust her for one damn second. She's already trying to dip out of here and go grab something to eat anyway. A really bad idea. I don't want to let my sister and my family down, but I just can't do this. And I don't know if I could be there tomorrow because this is just too much for me. Damn, it's tomorrow too. Could you imagine what it would take to switch everything around just because she can't like can't hang? But also then again, I don't know how bad panic attacks really are cuz I never had one. Maybe it really is like that and maybe like you just need to get away for a second. But I I I usually thought that they came on way worse. Like people were just freaking out, but she did look sweaty, but that could just be because she's 606 pounds. It's better than nothing and missing it. All right, next. We're going to have Gina give her speech. Okay, so we made it to the wedding. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. <gasps> okay. Hi. If you guys don't know me, I'm Allie's big, I mean little sister. Allie and I have always been more than sisters. We are best friends. <clears throat> Allie I did that. I said little, I mean big brother. Like, yeah, I, I did that too. It's so cringe. Why Why do people always add that in their speech just because they're fat? My rock. The one person I can always count on. I truly, <laughs> I truly don't know what I'd do without her. Mm -mm. I'm so Get happy food. that I got to stand here today and witness the love that you both have for each other. Allie and Keith. I love you both, and now you guys can high-five for a lifetime. Cheers. Thank you. Love you, Jane. I hope I get to do a little more than high-five after buying your ass a diamond ring. I'm just saying from the guy's perspective. Like, we can slap hands all we want, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to slap something else. That, Just saying from a male perspective. And I go back to see him again next week to find out if I hit my goal. And if I'm gonna get weight loss surgery... But one of his requirements for his program was that me and Beth would have to move to Houston for a year. So shortly after my sister's wedding, I decided I want to go ahead and make the move. Oh my god, okay. Okay, so I mean, she's moving kind of preemptively here. I don't think Dr. Now would be like, hey, come on down before she's ever been seen like losing any weight. But a lot of patients do this for whatever reason. I'm not sure, because then if you gain weight, it looks really friggin' bad. So I'm feeling good about the progress I should see today, and that it'll be where it needs to be to show a doctor now that I'm ready to be a part of his program and get weight loss surgery. Gina? Pissed off princess. At my last appointment, I weighed 606, and doctor now gave me a goal to lose 50 pounds today. So the weight I... I'm gonna call it right now. I don't think she lost 50. I don't think she lost five, but I'm really bad at this. So let's see where she's at. Need to be below today to hit my goal is 556. Yep. I can't see how that's right. I just don't see how I gained. Not with how hard I worked. I changed so much and I gave up a lot. So that just doesn't make any sense. And I don't want Dr. Now to tell me I can't do his program and that I'm not working hard enough when I really- Damn, all her shirts roll up. Look, she tucked it in her pants this time. She got tired of it shooting up on her. But she obviously is not working hard. She's kind of just half-heartedly in this just because everybody else wants her in this. I really am. So I hope he believes me. Hello. 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 How y'all doing? Good, how are you? Just fine, thank you. 
All right, Gina, in two months, you were supposed to lose uh, 50 pounds, but yeah. you gained eight pounds. So how is that possible? I wasn't focused at all. I messed up a lot. I take full ownership for that. I felt like being in New Jersey, I was just kept going back into my old ways. It was very easy. So I wasn't focused. And now that we moved down here, I feel like I'm more focused now to She's being like a pretty good, like smooth talker. I feel like she knows how to get her way in most circumstances like this. But at the same time, Dr. Now really ain't going to buy any of that. You would come in there and be like, I was trying this new thing. It's called reverse dieting where you just go the other friggin' way. No, Dr. Now's not buying that shit. Like, it don't matter. Really do it because I should have had the tools in New Jersey to do it. And I, and I didn't. And that, that's true. So, yeah. Come on. The reality is you didn't want to change your eating habits, so you didn't. It's as simple as that. So why in the world are you moving down here if you're not following my diet and exercises? I want to. I feel like I needed the change to move here. You know, what do you mean you want to? Meaning like I want to have a life. I don't want to die. And what I have been doing, I wasn't the correct way. And she makes it sound good. Like, she really makes you kind of want to believe her. Like, okay, what she's saying is somewhat genuine, but no. I, something about her just screams inauthentic to me at the top of my lungs. Like, at the top of her lungs. I can't believe a word she says just after I've seen kind of how she acts to everyone else in the family. I know that I do have the fight in me. I do know that I do have you know, the passion in me to do this. And now that I'm here, I feel like I'll be more focused. And I don't know, that's what I, I just think okay. I'll be more focused. Uh, 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 just hold it right there. Let me ask you this. Do you value your life? So many people don't at this point, but she has the passion for Pringles and the fight for Fritos. That's all I've seen so far. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you value your life, then you know you're overeating, and what you're doing is going to lead to an early death. Why do you keep doing it? I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. You don't it's know. Fun. So we're here because you need help, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know what you need. But the problem is you think that help is to do the work for you, and that's never going to happen. But you're the one who has to do the work to get there. No one else is going to do it for you. No, that's Exactly. But also, I mean, asking for help's one thing, but I can help you. But as somebody that's been in that sit like circumstance before that situation, I know less hamburger helper will help you. Like that's all it takes. It's true. I, I agree with you. I know. I I don't I don't know what to say. I don't want you to say anything. You asked me how you can be part of my program. I told you what you needed to do, but you still didn't do it. You skipped ahead and moved to here soon, like you expect to get weight loss surgery. I am glad you had an unhealthy environment with your family, but the primary dysfunction at home is with you and Beth. So you two still have a lot of work to do to address that before your home situation is going to improve. Right. She's overweight mm -hmm. and you're overweight extremely. Mm -hmm. And I got news for you too. You're both enabling each other, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, I mean, Beth Beth has to enjoy some of that food to an extent, right? Like, she's bringing her the food, but she's also enjoying it. At the same time, I feel like Gina's a pretty negative influence on Beth. Because she could totally come home and be like, I'm going to eat something healthy today. But Gina is going to yell, kick, and scream until she brings exactly what she wants. So both of them here is just a whole messed up dynamic, in my opinion. Okay. And this is a bad uh, dynamic you got between you two. And the whole relationship that you got is focused around food. Mm -hmm. So you may have moved away from your family to get out of that environment, but you're still living with your primary enabler, who now is the only person you know here in Houston. And your whole relationship you two have with each other revolves around food. So you both need to start doing something with the relationship beside the food. Okay. Uh, that's going to be kind of hard because it's been, what, three years? And this chick doesn't like to bathe? So I think food's about as far as we're going to get on this one, Doc. Like, we ain't going down that road. Been down there, wrote the book. Like, I ain't going down that bumpy-ass road anymore. 
So we got a lot of issues here between you two that you need to correct them. Okay? Okay. So far, they haven't done anything to qualify to be in my program. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you don't follow my diet and make any of the real changes you need, and you don't lose 58 pounds in the next two months, you need to go back to New Jersey. Okay? okay? Because there is no point on either of us wasting time if you're just going to wait around for someone else to do the hard work for you. And that's why moving before, like he's told you to, usually not a bad call. I mean, I kind of respect it to a point because you're like saying I'm going to be successful. But I think she just thought if she was there, she could manipulate Dr. Now into like seeing things her way. Because she's a pretty smooth talker, actually. Like, she's pretty good at saying what she wants to say and coming across as somebody who's not doing anything wrong, while at the same time doing everything wrong. It's just kind of weird. I know. If you know, then why haven't you done it already? I know. I don't know. I don't know what to say, because it's true. It doesn't matter what you say. Mm -hmm. It matter what you do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you figure of speech. It's the action. And that action is not moving now to Houston. The action is you value your life, so you make the choice to change that before it's too late. And at this point, the only hope I see to try to get through to you is to get you to start psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, probably a very good call for her. But in my head, I'm thinking, like, moving from Jersey to Texas... Like, the difference in food has to be insane. Because Texas is going to have all kinds of good, like, Tex-Mex type food. Jersey had them crusty-ass chicken fingers she was eating. And she liked them. So imagine what will happen when she gets her damn hands on some Tex-Mex or something. So we're going to set you up to see a therapist okay. as soon as possible. Okay. And Beth, I want you to go with her, okay? Okay. So this is going to be for both of you to make the changes. I'm disappointed you didn't make any progress, but yeah. uh, hopefully now we're going to make the changes, okay? Okay, thank you thank so you. much. All right. Damn, that's just total defeat on her face right there. I really do think she thought she was going to talk her way out of this one. But it usually don't work that way. When you take on Dr. Now, I mean, the fat Lord Vader, like, that guy, he don't play around. He don't at all. He don't take any of our crap. None. Me and Beth are heading back to see Dr. Now again. This will be my third appointment with him, and I'm hoping it goes better than it did last time, and that I hit my goal this time. But I'm nervous about getting on the scale and finding out my weight today. Gina? Oh, we got rid of the pistol. I really want to see her smile. I know I've seen it like once, but that's what I look for when I'm watching this. I'm waiting to see that woman smile at me. And now we just got her back at the Chubb Castle. I don't think Gina lost any damn weight. At my last appointment two months ago, I had somehow gained a little and was up to 614. So somehow. doctor now told me I still had my first goal of losing 50 pounds. Plus losing the eight pounds I gained at my last appointment. So I need to be below 556 today. And I'm really hoping I'm there. Or that at least really close to that. No shot. Okay, we're working back in a positive direction though. That is not the worst thing. At least she did put in a tiniest, tiniest bit of effort. Or she took some X-lax. Like she did something right here. Okay. Five pounds, but something, but we're at school. <sighs> I'm really scared right now because I know I barely lost anything and Dr. Now is not going to be happy with me. And I'm worried oh. that he's going to tell me I'm done and I'm not doing his program. I need this, so I really don't want that to happen. Hello. 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 How y'all doing? Good. Good. Why is she always holding that water bottle to her cheek? I thought she was just doing something weird before, but now I think she's just trying to cool down. But you can't be that damn hot in a sleeveless shirt. Put some shorts on or something, right? It could be better. Well, I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. It could be better. Yeah. All right, so this time you didn't gain, but you only lost five pounds. And you're still a higher weight than when you first came in. 
So the issue is you're still not breathing. Uh, you going to therapy? Yes, I did. Is it helping you figure out some things and helping you to improve your dynamic and be more positive? Absolutely. I think I really needed to see a therapist, and I think it's helping me a lot to not go to food and to really put myself first and really work on me, and that's what I've been really trying to do. I think we need to stop putting you first a little bit here. I mean, therapy could be a great thing for a lot of people. I kind of more am like a reserve, like keep my feelings tight to my chest type person, which I know that's kind of unhealthy, but at the same time, uh, yeah, she definitely probably needed therapy. All the stuff she's been through, everything, and just her whole attitude with life or with Beth in general, therapy, probably a very good call for her in this sense, like in this sense. So she is making a, some positive change. Do. Okay, well, so far, it hasn't made much of a difference. So keep working at it, and we'll see. Yeah, but at this bloody. point, we're going to go back to the first goal I gave you, if you want to do this. Lose 50 pounds over the next two months. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right, uh, so um, I'm going to see you about in two months, okay? Okay, thank you so much. All right, I'll see you. All right, well, I mean, at least she's losing something. I know she's right back where she started, even a little bit heavier than she started, but that says something. I mean, she's trying. She's trying to lose some weight here. Me and Beth are back at Dr. Niles for another appointment. My anxiety level is really high because it's so important I'm at my goal today. And I've been working so hard to make sure I lost what I needed today. Gina? At my last appointment two months ago, I was at 6.09. And Dr. Now's goal was for me to lose 50 pounds by today. So I'm praying when my weight comes up that I'm at least below 5.59. Okay, 23 pounds. That's something to be said about. She actually made some damn effort. So, I mean, I'll give her 23 pounds. That's good. Like, I, I would be happy. With the pace she's been going, finally losing that amount. I don't know. Was that two months again? So, again, if it's two months, that's not that great. But it's positive. Anything positive with her is going to be, a, like, a total morale boost. So, I'm happy with that. <sighs> I don't know. I did better, but it's still not my goal. So, I don't know what this means or what Dr. Now is going to say. I'm really hoping that he's at least happy I did better this time. But I'm scared that all he's gonna care about is that it's not how much I needed to lose. And he's not gonna be happy with me. Hello. 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 Bum, bum. How y'all doing? Good, how, how are you? you? I don't usually see Dr. Now do the whole happy thing either. I mean, he comes in there he might be ecstatic. It doesn't show on his face. He is just deadpan. Like, he... Deadest eyes I've ever seen, but he loves. He loves making the fatties a little skinny. I'm doing good, thanks. All right. So, Gina, this time you lost 23 pounds in two months period. Yes. That just barely half of what you should have done, but at least you're losing some weight now. So what are you doing different this time? I've been working extremely hard. I've been making all changes, therapy, doing stuff by myself, eating the 1,200-calorie diet, doing exercise. So I've been trying really hard to do everything I'm supposed to be doing. Then I don't buy that. I, she can't be eating a 1,200-calorie diet. She would be dropping weight so ridiculously fast, even though she was eating 1,200 calories of Kit Kats. Like, she would still be dropping weight because that's just so much less than she used to eat. Why didn't you lose more? I honestly, I don't, I don't know. I, Scale I don't gremlins. Know. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? How many times are you eating now? I try to do either three times a day or twice a day. Okay. So, yeah. No snacking? No, only healthy snacking. Like if I have a meal, like the healthy meal, then if I didn't finish it, I, I will snack on that instead of like... What do you mean you snack on that? Like, if I'm hungry, I'll go back to that meal that I didn't finish, and I'll finish it. That's 
So she just makes a friggin' monster, like, Matt stony size meal. Sits there, eats it all day, and says, well, that's just one meal. Even if it's healthy, you could still F up the portions. Like, you have to be so careful. Portions are the thing that I think everyone at 600 pounds has just totally forgot. Like, that word's not even in the damn dictionary to us. Portions? Who the hell's speaking that language? Like, that doesn't happen at 600 pounds. Really? Yeah. So you know, the diet says, your meals only last 20 minutes, right? Yes. But you're not following that, because what you're telling me is, you eat what you can eat in 20 minutes, and then after that, you go back and eat the same thing again? Mm -hmm. I mean, at the speed she was going, I don't think it would last five, right, ladies? You know what I'm... <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. You're doing that for every meal? Mostly, yeah. So if you're doing that for each meal, then you are eating six meals a day in reality. There is a reason the diet is a diet, and you need to follow it. Because when you come up with your own system like this, you justify in eating more by trading this or that amount. But the reality is everyone eats more than they realize. So if you don't stick to what you can eat in 20 minutes and that's it, you go back and eat another meal that is just as big, but convince yourself you're not eating that much. But you still... I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of diets that will say eating like five or six small meals throughout the day is okay. But if you eat that big meal, uh, you're going to have to be pretty strict about it. Uh, you can't really deviate a lot from a diet. A lot of people think like, oh, this won't be that bad. But when you start tying in something else, and even if it's just like a little something else, if it's like you're not doing carbs and you have a little bit of carbs, it will totally shoot you the other way. Like, it's insane just how bad it can be to just cheat a little. You're pretty much eating all day long. Did you feel like this was something wrong with doing that or not? No, absolutely. I don't think that was right. And I, I know that that was wrong. And yeah, I don't... Yeah. Um, bad girl. The reality is that you know what you're doing and that you're still overeating. Mm -hmm. You're just in, in denial of your overeating. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over but expecting different results? Uh, I think she's just convinced herself that she could do it a little bit slowly and you'll still approve her. Somehow, some way, she'll be able to talk you into it. I don't think she's seen the damn show before. That's true. I, 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 I understand that. Do you also understand this is very uh, bad situation that we cannot get you to do the basic level of work you need to start to save your life? Mm -hmm. So you're looking for magic solution that we magically make you lose weight or what? No. Damn right, Harry Houdini that heft. If I had some damn magic, I'd have vada cadabra the shit out of my rolls. But I don't think she's looking for any kind of magic. I just think she expected it would be a lot easier to get the whole surgery process done, and she wasn't going to have to work. I really think she might not have seen the show, and I don't think she's ever worked before anyway, because didn't she say she got straight on benefits at like 18 years old? I didn't even think they would accept you that young if you hadn't really tried out the workforce yet. No. So what's the solution from here? I, Jello and jiggle. I don't know. I, I think I need to really try harder or I, I don't I, I don't I don't know that's what you're telling me every time every time you come in give mm -hmm. me the same story and yeah. you're not losing weight mm -hmm. so unless you are able to change your eating habit and lose 50 pounds over the next two months we won't be moving ahead with you and you're never going to be approved of weight loss surgery all right, that's it. Doctor now has drawn his line in the sand. I think he's had enough of this hot, kind of whole dance around, act like we're trying and we don't know what's going on, because you have to know damn well what's going on. Unless you're just that like much in delusion that you just can't see it yourself. Okay, but this is your last chance. You got that? Yes, right? absolutely. And the only reason I'm giving you another chance is that you finally made some progress this time. Okay, thank you. But so you have no excuse. At this point, I'm going to get you to see a dietitian. Okay. So we'll set that up for you. But right now, we are giving you every possible tool to do this. So if you don't this time, then there is nothing more we can do for you. And we'll be done. You understand? I think the dietitian is probably a really good call. It helps out a lot of people. My dietitian kind of was like, well, just what you're doing is working, just cutting carbs and doing this. 
So I'm not going to mess with your diet so much at this point. But she did, you know, go over like these are more healthy options. Try to mix this in. She was helpful. But I think I had to see her like three or four times in a row for a month. And then that was it. I haven't seen her since. That, right? Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. I really hope so because this is it for you. And bet, and you need to work on things too, if you really want her to do this. I do. Okay, if you do need anything, you may call. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Why are we dragging Beth into this? Beth's a damn saint. All she does is bring the food left and right, man. Everybody's mean to Beth. I don't get it. Either I hit the goal today and I get to do Dr. Nas program so I can turn my life back around, or I didn't and I lose this chance to get help. All my hopes and dreams for a life I desperately want will be gone. So my whole life depends on this. And I really, really hope I did it. I mean, quite literally, everything is kind of counting on her making these changes. And it does feel like life or death. So I'm hoping she made a good loss this time. It looks like she's like that much smaller this time. So I think it should be pretty good. I don't think Beth has pants. I'm at Dr. Nas for what would be my final appointment if I don't hit my goal today. I'm at also, they do after hours at the Chubb Castle? Because it was already dark out. They're not out of there yet? My last appointment two months ago, I was down to 586. And my goal again was to lose 50 pounds by today. So I have to be at 536 or I'm going to lose my chance to get weight loss surgery. So I just have to have made it. That's a lot better than last time. But I'm okay. honestly not sure if that's enough and I did it. So I don't know what to think. But I'm still really nervous right now because I have no idea what's about to happen. I just hope it's not bad. I mean, that's the best loss she's had so far, by far. Uh, Doctor Now is kind of a hard read. Sometimes he'll be like, show me it again. Other times he'll be like, well, it was close enough. He, uh, it really all depends on, I guess, kind of your rapport with him. Have you made a, like? Have you made that kind of effort? She has lost little and then a little more and then a good, good bit right there. So I think he might actually approve her right here. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Okay, so Gina, you were able to lose some weight, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you lost 43 pounds, so not quite a goal, but it's almost double what you lost the last time. Mm -hmm. So that shows me you're working harder and going in the right direction, which yes. is the first really positive thing I've seen from you in 10 months. Yeah, because she gained, what, 8, lost 5, lost, I think, 23? Or something like that. And now 43. So she's making a positive. Well, first we started out a little rocky road here, okay? But now she's making positive choices left and right. Months. So how do you feel? I feel really good. I see myself making the changes. Um, you know, every day it's a little bit better. Um, so I'm proud of myself for that. Okay, well, I'm proud of you for that too. Thank you. And since I can see you working hard, this is what I'll do. And I'm going to go ahead and approve you for weight loss surgery. Oh my gosh. Okay, now my next question is, has she been bathing more than monthly? Has it turned to bi-weekly yet? Because they give you this antibacterial soap that you have to scrub with the night before, or the morning of and the night before surgery, just so you're totally clean, all this and that, so there's no bacteria that's going to get in there. I'm wondering if she goes in there, if they're going to break out in some other kind of disease. Because she's dying pants out here, okay? She's got straight venom down there. So are we going to invent some new kind of disease if she doesn't wash with that stuff and then she goes into the damn hospital? Like, is that how that works? That's awesome. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Whoa, Thank calm you so down. Much. I appreciate it. 
It took you a while to start making progress, so I need you to show me you're gonna stick with it and that this wasn't just a temporary change. Okay. So I'm gonna set up your surgery for three months from now. Okay. And I want you to lose another 50 pounds. Okay. And if you lose the 50 pounds, we'll go ahead with your surgery. Okay. But if you fall back to your old habit mm -hmm. and don't lose, mm -hmm. then uh, we're gonna cancel your surgery, okay? Okay. Keep it up over. And this is not gonna be good because she gives me the mentality that I very much had at first where I was like, just lose enough to get the surgery. And then you kind of like get prepared and they're like, all right, you got to wait this much longer. You got to keep going this much more positive. And you kind of just spiral right before the surgery. I swear, I think she's going to do what I did where you like gain a little bit of weight right before because you just panic and you want to eat all the food you know you're not going to be able to after the surgery. And it's stupid and it's like so dumb. I can't believe I even did it. But it's Last Supper Syndrome, man. You just go out and you eat. And I just, she gives me that kind of vibe. Next treatment, if you want to get weight loss surgery. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Today, I'm taking another big step in my journey towards being more independent and going out on my own for the first time in maybe seven or eight years. Me being less dependent on Beth is still a big focus in our therapy appointments. I don't think you'll realize just how important it is to get out and do stuff for yourself after so long you haven't been able to. But she still had to do all the shopping and get the groceries because I don't go out on my own. We're going to but get But today food. I told her I want to try and do it. And that I feel ready for this. Thank you. But it's hard not to be a little afraid because I still can't handle too much walking at once. Oh. So I'm going to have to use one of the motorized cars to get around for it all. Okay, she's going with the Amber Lynn Reed Strat where you just walk in the store, jump on one of those things. I was always too embarrassed to use one. But, yeah, so I just avoided the damn store and used curbside pickup. This is a little trickier than I thought, but I know I can manage. Sit inside. And I'm going to pace myself because I want to get everything on the list. And if I hit my limit too quickly, I won't be able to do that. I don't think I could be around all this food for long. There's so many things to buy and so many temptations. It feels like... True, but isn't that why they say don't go to the grocery store hungry? But she started out on the good side. Like there's a lot more options now than the last time I was at a grocery store. I have to be very careful not to push myself too much. Because I don't think Beth will let me try this again anytime soon if I end up getting myself in a bad situation. Um, no. oh, oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. Oh shit, she turned into Wreck It Ralph. Those are glasses too, aren't they? Oh shit, how embarrassed would you be if something like that happened? It's an accident. But she totally just rammed the damn thing like she was in a crash, like what is it, crash car derby or something? Oh my, a demolition derby, crash car derby. What the hell is that? Oh no. Call lens crafters. Oh my god. Lady! I, I want to get out of the store because I can't. I gotta get out of here. I didn't get the whole list or even most of it. I am a little disappointed about that, but I plan to try this again soon. Hopefully next time I can handle more and do more and not end up having an accident. And doing this is giving me much more appreciation of Beth and all she does for me. This chick's a damn wrecking ball, but she ended up with a uh, bell pepper, carrots, and glizzies. That's all she got out of this. So I hope they can make one hell of a meal with that, but I don't see them making too many concoctions. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Sorry about the eyeglass, please. Okay, thank you. 
I feel like the world changed a whole lot more than I realized. I'm starting to feel a little run down because it was a lot harder than I thought it would be, but it's all about baby steps. For and real? as long as I'm going in the right direction and moving forward, then I'm making progress. Any effort is positive, so you kind of just can't beat yourself up. You have to take the little things, the little steps, keep moving. She's trying, at least, even if she's, like, messing up or breaking things. I can say that she's a lot heavier than I was when I finally felt like I could do things again. Because it took me a while to be like, all right, I can go out, I can do this kind of stuff now, and I don't have to be scared that I won't be able to, like, walk back or make it back to the car or something stupid like that. But she's trying, so I give her props for that. Even though she's been a terrible person this whole episode, pretty much. I'm sorry we even haven't had dates. There's only one more month until my weight loss surgery, and I plan to keep working as hard as I can to make sure when I get there that I make it to my goal and get to move ahead. And I can't wait for that. I think it's good. Uh, she was supposed to drop another 50. She's pretty short, so I think I could see it on her. But right now, I don't see negative 50 right there. I, it looks like she's the same size, if not bigger. He's good too. He's so cute. What's up with the purple elephant, too? One year. Couldn't go without that. It's the day of my weight loss surgery, and I'm really glad it's finally here. I worked really hard and I waited so long for this and I'm ready to move ahead. But Dr. Now is coming by to do my weight check to see if I hit my goal first. So I'm a little nervous about that. Hello. 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 How y'all doing? I'm good, how, how are, are you? you? Great. So you ready for your surgery? Oh. You better stand a little to the north, Dr. Now. That thing spits venom. Watch out, she's dyeing clothing with it. Who needs one of those tie-dye machines at the damn carnival? Just send her in there. Oh, a little nervous. I never had surgery before, so I'm really nervous. Well, that's not much to be nervous because you're going to surgery, you're not going to picnic. <laughs> right, right, that's true. Okay. <laughs> so let's get you up and get you to this jam. At my last appointment three months ago, I was down to 543. I was cheeks out walking through there to weigh in too. Just because it was hard to like close it behind you. One of the nurses were like, uh, you're kind of a little popping out. And I was like, well, don't look too damn hard. But yeah, I, I like to mess with people. So I didn't really care. And doctor now gave me a goal to lose another 50 pounds. Oh, now let me turn it on. Okay. Let me turn you on. Okay, go ahead and step on her. So to move ahead, I need to be down to 493 today. Do you think? Son All right, of a bitch. 5.56. So you actually gained some weight, and that's not good. No, it's not. We got a little more than carrots and bell peppers and glizzies at that damn store. Where was Beth? I need to know what Beth was doing, because she was doing something here. She got to get you some damn takeout again. Just, like, really mad at myself right now. All right, Rats. let's go back to your room. Okay. I gained weight. How'd you gain weight? Well, I already know how. Those damn air calories are always tricky. All right, you started making some progress and moving in the right direction, mm. but you showed me today that you're not sticking with it like you need. So I'm canceling yeah. your surgery and we're not moving ahead with that today. I'm just really mad at myself right now because I've been working so hard. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you one more chance. Okay. But if I'm going to move ahead with you at all, then I need to see you lose a good amount of weight over a consistent amount of time. Okay. So you need Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the best for her. Like, I joke around a lot, but I don't want to see anybody live in that kind of hell and depressive state. Like, I really want to see her get out of this. So she just needs to get, like, all the way in with the program. 
to lose 75 pounds over the next three months. If you don't do that, you won't be doing the program or getting weight loss surgery from me. You got it? I got it, I understand. All right, let me get the nurse, take your IV out, and we're gonna send you home. In the meantime, if you need anything, give me a call. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Cheeks for cheese rolls. Cheese steaks. Cheeks for cheese steaks. We obviously steaks. have a very unfortunate situation with Gina. She had a chance to take a big step toward getting healthy today. But we can't move ahead with surgery if she's still gaining weight. So I'm very disappointed in this outcome and her choices right now. When she but my thing is, why have them at the hospital to weigh in? I never got that far, like, because they do a weigh-in a couple days before at the doctor's office. And they'll be able to tell, like, hey, do I need to call somebody else to get them into this, like, surgery spot? Like, why wait until she's already there when you could perform the surgery on somebody else that's probably on your waiting list? Because there's usually a waiting list. They'll call you and be like, hey, we have an opening. Do you want to come sooner for your surgery? Can we get you in this day? Just go get your blood work, yada, yada, yada. But this is just wasted time now because she's not able to go on. Finally had some weight loss a couple of months ago. I was hopeful it was a sign that she was finally starting to turn things around. But this weight gain showed that that is clearly not the case and that she's still struggling with taking responsibility for what she needs to do. Hopefully she wakes up and does what she needs over the next three months. But at this point, with her track record so far, things don't look positive. But as always, we'll be here waiting to give her the help she needs if she decides to start making the choices she has to. But I don't want to condemn anybody because I got it wrong a lot more than I got it right. So anybody could turn it around. It's just all a matter of perspective. And if she can just change her mindset, I could see her being like, pos like making positive... Uh strides and being more successful when it comes to her weight loss if she wanted to push herself out of her comfort zone she's very much a creature of habit it seems like she just goes back to what she knows i think i'm in shock i just can't believe this is happening and i don't know what i'm gonna do and i don't know how this happened i, I do. think this will motivate her to make sure that she gets the surgery for the next time this doctor now gave her one last chance, and this is hopefully the chance that she takes up on. I don't know how this happened, but I know I have to fix it. The only thing I could figure is that I'm sabotaging myself. So what I want to do is talk to Lola about what's going on. This is most certainly like a self-sabotage type move, but I also got to say something to Beth, because all you got was carrots and peppers and some glizzies. There's no way you gain that kind of weight without Beth bringing some of that food into the house. You might have beat her up until she brought it, but she had to bring it is what I'm saying. On with me and try to figure it out. I'm not giving up. I have three months to save my life or lose it all completely. And I can't let myself mess this up again. So I'm gonna get back on track and do what I need again. And in three months, I'm going back to the doctor now and I'm getting my weight loss surgery because my life depends on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, you either change or you end up in the grave. It's sad. It's just kind of where you're at at this point. She made some positive strides, but she got in her own way a lot more than she wanted to help herself, is what it seems like to me. I mean, she started off really rocky. She got a little better at the end. I didn't, like, absolutely hate her the way I did at the start at the end. So, I mean... Uh... It's tough. It's always tough to see somebody who just can't pull it together at the right time and always just kind of decides to walk, you know, the harder path in life. But that's it for Gina. So, uh, yeah, follow my Instagram, Twitter, shot of steel with some underscores in between it. Join our Discord if you're looking for some kind of weight loss advice or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. See you guys. Peace.